What if Jane Austen wrote a sequel to Pride and Prejudice? We're going literary today. So some of you may think, oh, this channel is about the golden age of films. And so I'm going to talk about the um, adaption in the 40s with Sir Laurence Olivier and Greer Garson. But I'm not a fan of that. Let me just say, okay, the reason why I'm not a fan of these adaptations in um, the feature film versions of Pride and Prejudice is because they forget the character of Mr. Wickham. Now, to me, if you get rid of Mr. Wickham, um, where's the prejudice? You know, it's part of the, the fun of the story is that Elizabeth looks at Wickham, who looks everything but has nothing, and looks at Wickham, uh, looks at Darcy and, you know, misjudges him. And, you know, even though she's very smart, she's done this complete misjudgment of these two characters. And um, that a lot of these film adaptations always either minimise or completely cut him out. And um, that, that's why, as a sidebar, I would say, to me, one of the best adaptations in, in terms of a feature film is Bridget Jones' Diary, or actually the Bollywood version, Bride and Prejudice. Is that right? Bride and Prejudice. I think that's how they called it. Anyway, um, personally, if I'm talking about TV adaptions or film adaptions, it is 1995's BBC, Colin Firth, Jennifer Earley, Pride and Prejudice miniseries, which is um, something I've watched annually, practically since it came out, so almost for 30 years. And I think if they were smart, they would listen to this podcast or listen to this video essay and go, ah, okay, here's an idea for a sequel. Now, I now count, there, there are countless like you know murder at Pemberley type, you know what what would happen next, and um, but they always continue on the story of Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth Bennet, but you know if you look at Jane Austen herself, she has no interest in telling the, the lives of a married couple. You know, she would be telling the lives of a, of a single person on the hunt, you know, a single woman needing to get married. Now, um, so how would we write a sequel to Pride and Prejudice? And actually, I think Jane Austen has already written it. Um, and probably, if you're listening to this as a Jane Austen fan, you've probably already read it or watched a film adaptation of it. Now, if you ask me as a screenwriter, okay, what would Jane Austen do? Okay, here it goes. So, now, Jane kind of hints at it in that, you know, at the, the end of the book, um, so Kitty, the younger sister, but not the youngest sister, goes to live with Darcy and Elizabeth. And... Um, she's left and Mrs. Bennet is just left with her middle daughter Mary. So we've already set a precedent of Darcy and Elizabeth taking care of a poorer sibling. Now what about well and, th and they do also mention that um, Darcy does continue to send money to the, um, the Wickhams. So um, I don't think the Wickhams are going to be out of their lives. And so let, let's, let's look at the Wickhams. So he's been sent north to the militia and um, so he's, he's an officer and, and she's, you know, she, and um, Mrs. Wickham, um, what was her name again? Not Kitty, Lydia. 
So Lydia is married to him and she's busy writing letters to Elizabeth. Please send us money. So they don't have much money. But they're both very smart, you know. Um, so let's say a little bit down the track, let's say they have six children because, well, you know, they were going at it like rabbits um, in the in the TV series, right? So um, let's say they have six children and let's say the, the eldest daughter is very smart and unlike her parents is, you know, because kids always rebel against their parents. So she is, you know, very chaste and very boring, maybe not boring, but anyway, just very virtue, a virtuous young girl. And let's say uh, maybe Mrs. Wickham writes to her sister to, well, give her clever young daughter a better chance in life. And um, I bet they would take her in. So the Darcy's in, um, in Derbyshire, in La near Lambton, um, which I have been to, my goodness, it is, you know, the Lake District around Derbyshire, um, is it, is it around, but anyway, that area, it's beautiful, no wonder, oh my goodness, anyway, um, I mean, that's nearly 10 years ago I went there, but my goodness, um, that, that area is beautiful, and I even went to, uh, one of the places that I think was used for the 2005 adaptation as Pemberley. Okay, sidebar about Chatsworth House. It, it is so big, um, we, it took us four hours to walk around the house. So anybody who wonders like when, uh, when Ms Bingley said, offers to take a turn about the room, taking a turn about the room was a big walk. So. Anyway, it's a it's a wonderful house, and you know, and the grounds are delightful, but we didn't walk around them because they would have taken four hours to do. But we did have a nice lunch anyway. Um, so okay, so she goes to live with them, and she's brought up by them, and you know, maybe she falls in love with um, her cousin, but you know, well. Hasn't everyone guessed? Well, what's the book called? It's called Mansfield Park. Mansfield Park is basically... Now, you may say, okay, maybe Darcy and Elizabeth would have had a better relationship than um, the mum and dad do in that story. But, you know, the basic skeleton of the story is a sequel to Pride and Prejudice. There you go. Do you want a sequel to Pride and Prejudice? It's already there. It's called Mansfield Park. You know, just change the names, BBC. They're, they're at the right age. Jennifer Ely, Colin Firth, get everyone back. And um, you can pick some, some new, young, bright, new starlet to play Fanny Bryce, or in this case, Fanny Wickham, and um, make it happen. So what do you guys think? Can we do it? I don't know. I'd love to be able to do it. Um, thank you for listening. This is a quick little video. And um, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>